Last week, several people reached out to me asking me to do a Pi ATS and Genie Hello World demo, how to get started with this thing, asking you shall receive. By the end of this video, we'll have Pi ATS and Genie up and running, and then a couple examples of how you could use this killer tool. Let's go. I am so excited to talk about Pi ATS and Genie, this killer tool that can really transform the way you work with any of your network devices, not just Cisco platforms. But before we get started, if this is your first time visiting my channel and you're looking to grow your IT career and your IT skills, hit that subscribe button and the little bell so that you get alerted when new videos come available. All right, Pi ATS and Genie, what is it? Well, technically, they've already renamed the Genie portion to the Pi ATS library. But if you're digging through commands or you're digging through documentation, you'll still see Genie mentioned pretty much everywhere. But that kind of does beg the question, like, what is Pi ATS? What is Genie? Should I use one? Should I use the other? Let's simplify this right now. Pi ATS is a Python testing library. Notice I didn't say anything about networking yet. It's just a tool for building testing frameworks in your pipeline, maybe a CI CD pipeline or just testing out a generic Python script. Uh, and that can be applied anywhere. It's an open source tool. So whether you're networking or not, you could use PyATS for doing all sorts of Python automated testing. Where Genie comes in is it extends PyATS. It adds functionality to it specific to networking. And Genie is really the magical tool that we're talking about when we talk about network automation. Genie has the ability to do, I mean, so many things. Like, it's hard to even summarize it. And I'm going to really encourage you to check out the documentation because by the end of this video, we'll only scratch on the surface. But it can do things like parse show commands into structured JSON, regardless of how old your devices are. It can take snapshots every day of what those configs are and make comparisons as to what's changed beneath them. It can automate testing deployments against maybe a viral environment. So that way, if you change the script or something, it can test it in the test environment and see if, oh no, CPU counter went through the roof or we've clearly got a switch loop or something like that. So that way you can test all of these things against virtual environments using PyATS and Genie. And then you'll be able to see what would happen in the real world instead of just deploying code and then hoping it works. So by the end of this video, we'll get PyATS and Genie up and running. I'll show you how to parse commands into JSON. It's very easy. And we'll even check out that snapshot feature so that you can see and compare what's changed from one snapshot to the next. Check it out. Now, I know this may come as a huge surprise, but Pi ATS and Genie works really best on a Linux machine. It requires a very small footprint, only one core and one gig of RAM to get started. So in order to get started, I want to run my Pi ATS and Genie environment in a private virtual Python environment. So what I'm going to do is I'll just change into a working directory like documents and I'll make a new directory. We'll call this genie, something like that. I'll change into my genie directory if I can spell genie correctly. And now what I'll do is I'm going to create that virtual environment. We'll say Python three module virtual environment in this folder. That's what that little period does. I'll press enter. Great. Let's launch that virtual environment with source bin activate. There we go. Now we can see with this little genie here, I'm now in my virtual environment and this is like building it out from scratch. That's totally okay. That's what I want to do. First thing we need to do is we need to get Pi ATS. So let's give it a pip install Pi ATS, but here's the kicker. There are multiple versions of Pi ATS. You could get the full version. You could get the robot version. Remember, we said that Pi ATS with Genie, they renamed it to Pi ATS library. So I'm going to say Pi ATS open bracket library close bracket. That says, give me Pi ATS with the Pi ATS library attached to it. We'll press enter. There we go. Looks like everything is already up and running here. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to download some of the example code that comes from Pi ATS, the Pi ATS team. If I right click and just paste it in here, you'll see we're actually going to do a git clone, github.com, Cisco test automation slash examples. There we go. Let's just see if this is working. We'll give it a P Pi ATS run job Ooh, nope examples basic basic example job dot pi hey that looked pretty good all of these things passed we're looking like we have pi ats up and running now let's actually see it in action i have some additional libraries that i need to install from pip we're going to install xlrd xlwt 
an XLSX writer. It'll make more sense in a second while we're doing this. Okay, we've got those packages installed. Now here's the next thing. The way that Pi ATS and Genie know how to connect to which devices, what credentials to use, it uses a YAML file. And I know you're, they, they call it the testbed file. And I know my gut reaction was like, eh, YAML again. But here's the thing. I think the team who created Genie recognizes that while reading YAML is very pleasant. It's very easy to read a YAML file. Writing YAML files can be kind of a pain in the butt. So they built a built-in functionality that will generate your testbed YAML file for you. Oh, so awesome. All right. So back here on the terminal, we'll say Genie, our first Genie command, create testbed. We'll specify that my output is going to be an output file. It's going to be into a folder called YAML, and I'll just create a file called testbed.yaml. And I'll also specify encode password so that it encrypts the password under the hood for you know, security purposes. I'll press enter. Oh, and I spelled test bed wrong. Tested bed. That's not good. Let's fix that real quick. There we go. All right. So if I have a list of devices that all have the same username, uh, this is where you would go to say yes, right here. I'm just going to use one device right now. Uh, so I'm going to say no to this answer. Do all devices have the same default password? I'll say no again. Do all devices have the same enable password? I'll say no one more time. Now this, this is important. Device host name. This is not just the device host name that you're putting in the YAML file. This host name that you specify right here must match the actual host name on the network device. So in this case, I want to telnet into a very old Cisco 3750G switch that I have in my environment. I've had this in my lab for years. Um, it doesn't even support SSH. So if we can parse output from that, I know this thing is pretty stinking powerful. The host name on that device is Knox Lab Cisco with a capital C. The IP, 10.10.10.2. The username, Knox Lab. The password and the enable password. The protocol and the actual operating system is iOS. Do I have any more devices to add? No. So just to see it, if I do cat yaml testbed.yml, there it is. That's what it generated for me. Pretty cool, right? All right, so moment of truth. Let's do genie parse, and then in quotes, I'll specify my command, like show version. I'll pass in the parameter testbed file, and I'll say it's that YAML testbed.yml. And I'll specify a specific device from that YAML file. Noxlab Cisco is the host name of that device. If I press enter, there it is. Look at that. Just like that, parse that output straight to JSON. So let me clear the screen. We'll try something else. Let's try show VLAN. There it is. There's my VLANs parsed again to structured JSON data. So there's your first big win. You already have the ability now to parse structured data from unstructured responses, thanks to the power of the Genie templates. Now, let's see if we can actually use the structured data to turn this into snapshots and then compare the differences between those snapshots after I make a config change. So to take a snapshot, we'll use the exact same command, except for now, all we'll do is we'll add an additional parameter called output. It's going to output this into a folder that we specify here. In this case, I'll call this folder demo1. If I press enter here, you'll see what it does. Look at this. It showed you we parsed the command and we saved it as these text files right here. That's going to have the text files that are storing the JSON data. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up a new terminal real quick. I'll telnet into that switch. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to create a new VLAN on the fly. We'll say like VLAN 95 or something like that. So now I've created a new VLAN on the switch. What I want to do now is I want to take another snapshot and then compare the differences between the first snapshot and the second snapshot to see if it can detect what's changed. So I'll run the command one more time, but I'll change the output to be output demo two. And now I want to compare the difference between demo one and demo two. How hard is it to compare the difference between demo one and demo two? Well, we just say genie diff demo one, demo two. All right, it says the genie diff summary between directories demo one and demo two has been done. It says the file noxlab show VLAN parsed text, it can be found in this location. So what I'll do is I'll just copy this. I'll say cat, show me the money. Look at that, right there. VLANs 95 have been added. It shows you the type, the shutdown is false, uh, all of this 
really great info right here thanks to the power of Genie. Pretty stinking awesome, right? I mean, just like that, we're up and running with an amazingly powerful tool that can parse output, tell us what's changed. We can now schedule this using Python. We can actually use Python to do anything that we've done here. You can actually import the Genie libraries into Python and work with them in your own Python scripts if you want to. You can then schedule these to run every day and detect changes in your environment and then send you reports. Maybe you wanna post that to Microsoft Teams or Slack or send you an email. Do it, absolutely, that's what this tool is here for. It's amazing, and thank you again, Cisco and team for creating such an amazing tool, providing it free of use on open source, GitHub, just killer. Awesome, great work. Again, I can't encourage you guys enough to dig further into this documentation because we're on the tip of the iceberg of this tool. This thing is amazing. And definitely follow all of the DevNet team like Hank Preston at Cisco DevNet, Stuart Clark, JB. You want to follow all of them on Twitter because they're the guys who are all over this tool. So that's getting started with PyATS and Genie. Thanks for stopping by, y'all. See you in the next one.